Good morning, lovelies. Welcome back to Cornwall. My name is Jane Sarche. I write recipes for a living. This is not my camper van. This is Johnny's. My camper van is in the shed having a proper pimp and makeover. So I've stolen Johnny's van and said, no, you can't have it to go to work today. I need it for filming. I need to bring you guys a video and you come first in our relationship, clearly. <laughs> Okay, today's video is for you, all my beautiful chocoholics. You're going to love this one. And just because you're going camping and you don't happen to have an oven on board, doesn't mean you should miss out on your chocolatey goodness. So today I'm bringing you three stovetop recipes that all you need is a cool box or a fridge or heck, even just a nice little safe cupboard that the dog can't get in because, hey, don't feed chocolate to your dogs, kids. Uh, just somewhere overnight that these will cool. That's all they actually need. Um, they're not going to go off or go bad if you leave them overnight to cool. Oh, <laughs> saying that good luck trying to get them to last overnight because it's just not going to happen just wait until they're like a little bit cool enough that you can cut them or the heck just dig in with a spoon who am i kidding that's what i'd do right it's time to get you lot hyped up on sugar let's go Alrighty, so first up we have chocolate cornflake cakes for this you're going to need a butter dark chocolate golden syrup and cornflakes <laughs> uh golden syrup so if you can't source this stuff in your corner of the world i'm pretty sure you could swap it out for honey or maple syrup or maybe agave syrup i've never tried because golden syrup is really easy to source in the uk um, but i don't see why it wouldn't work and i'm sure it'd be just as delicious So line a baking dish or some kind of deep plate with foil or cling film. Um, this is just going to make for a really easy peasy cleanup and it also means you'll be able to get your cornflake cake out of the tray easily. Now traditionally cornflake cakes are made in little paper cupcake cases um, but I figured it would work just as well in a tray bake type situation and I can tell you that yes, yes it does. So melt together the butter, chocolate and golden syrup in a large saucepan. Dang, doesn't that look delicious? When it's all molten and silky, tip in a big handful of cornflakes. Toss them around in the chocolate until they're all coated and then just keep adding in a few more cornflakes at a time until there's no puddle of chocolate left on the bottom of the pan. You don't want to be too generous with the cornflakes. Ideally, you want every single flake to be well covered. Kind of just add in small amounts as you go. Tip the whole lot into your baking dish and then just kind of smooth out the top with the back of a spoon. You can then pop it in the fridge or a cool box for about half an hour to an hour or just leave it in a cold spot in your van overnight. Next up, a rocky road. Now, we're cheating a little bit. We're gonna start off with exactly the same base as the previous recipe because it's delicious. So again, melt together your butter, your golden syrup and chocolate in a large pan. Again, line a deep plate or baking tin with foil or cling film. And then this is where it gets a bit different. So I chopped up a packet of shortbread biscuits. You can swap these out for any biscuits or cookies you like. I just really thought that the shortbread, because they're deep, I thought it would just add a really good crunch into the rocky road. Um, then you're just going to chuck the biscuits into the pan, coating them well in your chocolate goo. Then I've got a couple of little bags of Maltesers going in and of course, a big old pile of mini marshmallows. You have to have marshmallows in a rocky road. It's not rocky road, it's probably a tiffin if you don't add marshmallows. So it's still delicious, but Oh my God, I have to tell you, this is the first time I've ever made Rocky Road and this blew my mind. This stuff is hardcore. And I think it's mostly down to those little marshmallows because they kind of 
melt and become stringy, sticky. Oh, just so good, <laughs> just so good. Now, when it's all combined, you're gonna tip that into your lined pan. Again, smooth over the top and then chill until set. And then you can remove it from the pan and cut into chunks. Um, and honestly, this Rocky Road is so good and I have so little willpower that I honestly plan to never make this ever, ever again. That's how good it is. I cannot be trusted around it. <laughs> And finally, we have the coconut bites. And this, my friends, is the healthy one. And I, I believe this is really, really healthy. So let's get into it. You only actually need two ingredients to make coconut bites. You do need a good quality dark chocolate for this. Don't use a cheap one. Um, really treat yourself. If you're gonna go healthy for your chocolate fix, then please buy a decent quality dark chocolate. And you also want toasted coconut flakes. And then as an optional extra, you can top them with toasted chopped hazelnuts like I am. Not essential, definitely optional, but so, so delicious. Now to make the coconut bites, because we're not adding all that butter and syrup into the chocolate, we do need to be a little bit more careful with it. So we're using a bain-marie or a double boiler, and that's where you melt your chocolate in a small pan or bowl over the top of a bigger pan that's got gently simmering water in. This is just to protect your chocolate so that it doesn't burn or split. Um, it is quite important if you just put a pan of chocolate onto the heat, it, it's very likely to go horribly wrong and you're gonna waste all that yummy chocolate. So when your chocolate is all melted, then just tip in the toasted coconut flakes and give them a good stir around. And again, you can keep adding a little bit more coconut, just a little bit at a time, again, until that puddle of chocolate is gone from the bottom of the pan. But do make sure that you're not being a bit mean with the chocolate. You do want each piece of coconut to be coated. And then use two teaspoons to scoop up little bite-sized dollops of the mixture and pop them onto the foil-lined plate or tray. And then the optional step, if you want to sprinkle them with some chopped toasted hazelnuts, totally, totally recommended. You don't need them. The chocolate coated coconut tastes amazing on its own, but these little chopped hazelnuts, they always remind me of eating Ferrero Rocher. So if you're adding that extra kind of decadent flavor to a really healthy treat, then like, why wouldn't you want to add it really? <laughs> Right, people, I probably need to go and get those in the fridge pretty soon and then get ready for a very large sugar crash, which I do believe is headed my way. <laughs> As always, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please whack the thumbs up if you did. And if you love camping and food, then you better subscribe because that's what we're all about. Also, I am loving doing these three recipes in one video. What are you thinking? Are you enjoying them too? Please let me know in the comments below. I would love your feedback. And also, is there something that you think I should be covering in one of these videos? Is there an ingredient or is there a piece of kit or is there something that you think, oh, she needs to do a video on that? pop down to the comments and let me know. Also, while you're down there, if you could also let the rest of us know if there are any chocolatey desserts that would fit into this category, so stovetop, no oven, could make somehow when you're camping. I don't mind adapting recipes a little bit. If you've got something that you think would work really well, please let us all know down below so we can all get lots more ideas to make our camping trips even tastier. And if I find some fantastic ideas down in the comments below, who knows? There might be a follow-up video to this one featuring your recipes coming very, very soon. Right, I think I need to go and prepare a big salad for my lunch, so I'm going to wish you all adieu. Please stay safe, keep smiling, and hopefully I'll see you all camping soon. Mwah. Take care.